Hi everybody, we're going to do uh, graphing quadratics in vertex form, which I think I'm going to really enjoy. Uh, I didn't preview it. I assume they're going to give me a standard form, which is the uh, leading coefficient or the, oh no, they didn't. Interesting. Okay. I like it. Okay, I thought it was going to be different. Um, this is a stretch. And we can think of this almost like a slope, but we need to be careful because a parabola doesn't have a standard slope because the slope is literally changing every single second. But what happens is that this is a standard form. This is, this is the y equals x squared. And what happens is when you put a six in front of it, you're literally multiplying all the values by six. So you can think of it as being stretched six times as tall. Uh, a really, that's a really good way of thinking about it because our first point happens to be at one, one and negative one, one. And when we stretch it six times as high, it's now going to be at one, six. There's a lot of other ways of thinking about it, but for me, I like to visualize it as being stretched in the vertical direction. So uh, this is going to be my y equals six x squared. Now let's see if it allows us to do that on our, on our graph over here. We're gonna go through zero, zero, and then we're gonna go through one, six and negative, and negative one, six, and there it is. So submit. Let's see what happens this time. Okay, this time we're gonna have two different transformations. We're going to transform it because the negative, instead of going up, it's going to be reflected down. So it's standard parabola reflected down would look like this. But again, what's happening is we're multiplying it by negative eight. So instead of going through one negative one, it's gonna actually, which it would go through if it were just y equals negative x squared, that's that one, then it's going to be stretched and it's gonna be eight times as steep. So it's gonna be stretched in the y direction so that it's gonna go through uh, one negative eight. And a lot of people are gonna say, oh, I'm just counting the slope. You're not, this is not a slope, this is a stretch. And I know you're thinking, uh, but it doesn't matter. It does. Trust me. Okay. This time we're stretching in the positive y direction. So it's going through zero, zero, and of course, one, seven. This one's going to go through one, three. It's going to be stretched three times as tall. You know, you just want to know how to do it, but there's more to it than that. Okay, this one's going to have two transformations. It's going to stretch it in the y direction, but it's also going to put it 10 units down. Um, uh, one way to think of it is that I have y equals or f of x, same thing, ax minus h squared plus k. Well, the k is the negative 10. And the H, the thing that's being added to the X is zero. So this is our vertex, zero, negative 10. The A value, or the, the kind of like a slope, the coefficient is going to stretch it either up, uh, it's gonna stretch it in the positive direction or the negative direction. And it could compress it if it were less than one. Uh, if it was a fraction, then it compresses it. And we'll talk about that one in again, and again in a bit. So we're through zero negative 10, which is right there. Oh, which is right there, I said. Dang it, I lost it. Hang on, let me get rid of this real quick. It's, I think I have to go over it. There it is, there it's gone. There, that's where I want it. Now I want it to be stretched. Normally it would go through one, one, but now it's gonna go through one, four. One, two, three, four. And still, a lot of people are going to think of this as a slope, and it really isn't, because notice that 1, 4 doesn't work in the second points. So you have to be very careful on how you do that. 
All right. Now, this time we're going to go through um, two zero. And if I zero out my x value, two makes this thing, this whole term, zero. And then my y is zero. So two zero is my vertex. Now it, it has another uh, transformation. It's being reflected down and it's being stretched. So we're going to go through the point that's effectively one negative five, counting the two zero as my zero. This is kind of my new origin, if you think of it that way. And then the negative five is my from here, if I think of this as zero, zero, then this point is one negative five. Anyway, that's how I think of it. Uh, it's being stretched five times as strong in the negative direction. So there you have it. Okay, zero, negative eight is our y-intercept. I'm going to write it over here so we can see it better. y equals six x squared minus eight. And it's been stretched down more, or it's been translated eight units down, and it has a stretch uh, coefficient of six. So it's being stretched six times as tall in the y direction. If this six were not here and it was just a one, then it would go through right there, wouldn't it? But that isn't where it is because that's a six. So it's getting stretched six times as high. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hopefully that's clear. And zero negative four is my y-intercept. And uh, it's also my vertex and it's being stretched five times as high. So instead of one, one with, with a normal parabola, I'm gonna be five times as high. Two, three, four, five, and there it is. Oh, this one, I like this one, I like these. Um, notice that h is eight because this is x minus h and the k is 10. This is my vertex, eight, 10 is my vertex. There it is right there. Now negative seven is going to be a stretch downward. It's going to be first of all reflected down because it's negative and the seven is gonna make it seven times as steep as normal. So instead of it looking like this, which would be, this would be negative one right there, but that's not what's there. It's negative seven, so it's seven times as steep. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's seven times as steep. And there it is, that's it, simple, simple. All right, so, I like to think of it like this. What value of x makes this zero? Rather than thinking of the h's and the k's and memorizing the formula, I like to think, what will make that part of my function be zero? And the zero value, or the thing that zeroes it out, is the x equal to two. And there's a lot of other reasons to learn about zeros. Uh, they actually have a zeros have some meaning later on too. And then when all that is zero, y is negative one. And again, you can think of it as hk as well. So there's my vertex, two negative one right there. Now I have a kind of slope or a stretch of four. So it's going to be four times as steep. Instead of looking like that, it's going to be four times as steep two, three, four, and there it is. Okay, this time, what makes our, what zeroes out our x? Uh, one, another reason to think of why, why it's important that you go to the zero is that when I go away from four, four is my zero point. That's where that squared part gets zeroed. Anything above four will be positive and anything below four will be negative and the positives and negatives are what make that uh, axis of symmetry and make that thing symmetric. Something to think about. Uh, when x is four, then this whole thing is zero. 
four zero is my vertex, there it is. And we have a negative two as our leading coefficient or our a value. So it's gonna go through one negative two, if you like, uh, stretch downward twice as steep. There it is. Okay, uh, four, again, four zero and stretch downward three times as steep. Oh, I missed. There it is, three times as steep, that's it. This time I'm going to zero out my X, which is eight. Eight makes all that zero. And then my Y is negative seven. I know you like to do the HK, but I promise this is better. Uh, eight negative seven is my vertex and my stretch factor is seven. So we're gonna go through eight negative seven, which is right there. And then we're gonna go seven up. Uh, when X is one or one more than eight, then Y is seven times as high. Hopefully that's clear. <laughs> uh, I've stretched it seven times in the Y direction. Anyway, there it is. What? Oh, did I not count right? Uh, I didn't count right. I went six up. Sorry, guys. Oh, well, I wanted to do some extra ones. I was having so much fun. All right. I'm just going to be more careful this time. So nine, negative seven. So we're at nine, negative seven. And I'm going to put, well, I know it's five. So we're at nine, negative seven. There it is. And I'm going to go five times as steep. That's one, two, three, four, five. I'm actually going to count it this time. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, I want to zero out that X, which is negative eight. And then that's going, that zero is going to give me a negative four for my Y. So I'm talking about negative eight, negative four is my vertex. There it is. Uh, my A value is four. So it's four times as steep. So one, one, two, three, four is right there. Hmm. Oh, this one's a little more interesting. Okay, so there's no H value, if you like, uh, to zero out my X squareds. I just need a zero for X. And of course, Y is then gonna be four. So zero, four is my Y, uh, y intercept, but it's also my vertex. And the negative eight is my stretch. So I'm gonna go all the way down there from four all the way down to negative four uh, when X is one. Hmm, okay, so to zero out my X part, I need a five, and that gives me a Y equal to one. And that's gonna be my vertex. I have a stretch and a reflection of negative six. So we're going through five, one, and from here, we're gonna go down six, which is right there, isn't it? And it looks good, yep. Okay, to zero out my X, I need an eight. And all that is gonna be zero now. And then Y is gonna be four. And hooray, we finally have a one fourth. Now this is what happens. And, and this is a little harder to see, but here's what's gonna go on. Uh, I would go through, I'm gonna think of this as being the eight four, okay? This is my new, um, this is my new, uh, axis, if you think of it that way. Now, uh, a standard one would go through one, one, wouldn't it? But what's happening is that I'm multiplying that one by one fourth. So instead of going through one, one, it's going to go through one, one fourth, which doesn't help a whole lot because it's really hard to estimate a one fourth on there. But think of it like this. Look at what happens at two. At two, it's going to be one fourth what it normally would be. Normally, it would be at two, four, wouldn't it? But what's one fourth of four is just one. Ah. So my slope would 
instead of going through two, four, we'll now go through two, one, because it's one fourth the Y value. Uh, I like to think of it as a compression. Uh, if you think of like this four as being normal and I compress it to one fourth as tall, this was my normal point and it pushes it to one fourth as tall. And there, there's where it's gonna be. So lots of ways of thinking about, about it. We need to go to eight four, which is gonna be here. And now instead of going through here, if this was a one, it would look like that, wouldn't it? If this, if this one fourth wasn't there, it would look just like that. That would be it. The thing is it's one fourth. Well, notice that when it goes through the one one, it goes through the two four. That's two four right there, isn't it? But I want it to be one fourth as tall. So one fourth as tall goes through that one right there. Oops. Oh, okay, I've got to do that. And there we go, one there. Now that's uh, one fourth as tall as it was before. Anyway, hopefully it's clear enough there. Let's see if we can compress another one. We might get a reflection too. Nope. Oh, they're gonna be mean to us. Okay, uh, so what value of X makes that zero? We need a 2.5 to make that zero or a five over two. I like 2.5 or two and a half. This is one of the few places where I actually like mixed numbers uh, because it's easier to visualize two and a half or 2.5 than it is five over two. Uh, when I have X is 2.5, then that X, that X squared part is all zero and I get eight for my Y. So I have to go through 2.58, which is right in between there, like that. See where I put it? 2.58. Now I have the negative eight as the uh, stretch or the compression. Um, it's a stretch in the vertical direction of eight, but keep in mind that I'm in between. Because I'm at the half, I need to go in between and then down the eight, which puts me right there. Notice that I'm halfway between there. Uh, for my two and a half, it's going to actually go through three and a half right there. And if you want to, ex another way to think about it is that because if I put a three and a half in here, 3.5, notice that that's going to be 3.5 minus 2.5, which is one multiplied by negative eight gives me negative eight plus eight, which is zero. There, that's why it goes through 3.50. There it is. <laughs> Hopefully it's clear enough. Let's see if we get a more interesting one. Okay, kind of the same thing. We're going to go through negative one half, negative 0 0.5, or negative one half is fine. And that's going to give us zero right there. So negative one half zero is right there. And it's stretched downward five times as far as normal. So instead of going one over and one down, this would be negative one. I have to go down right to there. Um, I, I don't want to draw the other one because then I have to erase it and so on. But there it is. Notice that I'm in between the zero and the one because I started at negative one half. So that point, that green point that you see down there that's being, uh, that has the little uh, thing around it, that has the little uh, marks around it, that point is at 0 0.5, negative five, because this is one over away from there. That's another way to think of it, but there it is. Okay, let's see if we can get you another one. Oh, they keep doing the same thing. Okay, that's all right. Uh, 11 over two is five and a half. So that's 5.5. So to get this to zero, I need 5.5. And that's gonna give me zero. So 5.5 zero is right there. It's right in between the five and the six and it's negative seven. That means that I have to go between the six and the seven and I have to go seven down. So 
between the six and the seven and seven down is right there, I believe. No, nope, not quite right there. There it is. You want to make sure you're in the right spot. Um, the point I want is between the six and the seven, which is 6.5, because I, I want to move one away in the x direction. And an x equal to one, when you multiply it times itself, you get one. And then when you multiply that by the negative seven, which is in front, see the negative seven up there, that gives you negative seven. So 6.5 is at negative seven, because this part was at zero. So this point is like one negative seven, if this is zero, zero. Now that's the way I like to think of it. I know, you just want to know how, how do you do it? Oh, I like this one. This is really complicated. Well, <laughs> uh, first we want to make all of that zero. What value of x will make all that zero? We want our x to be the 1.5, don't we? That's going to zero all that out, and then we're going to get our y value, which is 8. Not so bad, 1.58. So there it is. Now, what I do is I think, OK, this is my new vertex. But I think of it as my new origin, too. So what I want to do is I want to see what happens when I want to compress it and reflect it. We know it's going to go down because it's being reflected because of the negative. And we know that it's going to be compressed to one fourth as tall as normal. So the point I'm interested in is two, um, because two would normally go to negative eight if I were talking about negative one x squared. Um, but what I want is I want it to be negative one fourth. So what point do I want? I want negative two, negative two, don't I? for a second, hang on, sorry. Okay, one more time. Um, let's just think of it like this here. Uh, I'll do it like this. Okay, normally if, if this was my vertex and I was looking at one negative one fourth, normally I would do this. One goes to negative one, two goes to negative eight. No, negative four, God, I'm so dumb. Negative four, sorry guys, I keep saying negative eight, I don't know why. Um, negative four, but I don't want negative four. I actually want it to be one fourth as far. So that means that this, instead of being through one negative one, is gonna be neg one negative one fourth. Instead of one negative four, it's gonna go through one negative one. So here's the one I want right there. Uh, nope right there, there it is, sorry. Um, notice that this point is two to the right of 1.5, which is 3.5. When I go two to the right, normally that's going to take two and square it and it's gonna be four. But because it's a negative, it's going to be down. It's going to be a negative four. But because it's one fourth, it's going to be negative one. So um, the negative one is from here. So that means that it's really at seven, which you can see is correct. Voila. I thought about it too much. Anyway, there you have it. Um, hopefully it isn't too confusing for you. Uh, I'll, I'll maybe do some more examples and it'll be clearer. So practice it yourself and I'll see you back again. Bye guys. Sorry, didn't mean to make it so hard for you.